My buttons are on the right one. I am not. <laughs> Glad I wasn't picking my nose. Was I? I did just scratch my nose. Hey, I'm Mary Gunn, and we're going to start this show in just a second. This is uh, Fun University. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Mary Gunn. Welcome to Fun University. Take two. Hi, I'm Mary Gunn. I'm Mary Gunn, Fun Founder and Head Professor of Fun University. And your intrepid host is to Craft Roulette. But this isn't Craft Roulette. This is the offshoot of Craft Roulette, which is Fun University. On Craft Roulette, we don't teach, we don't sell. We just talk and craft and see what the wheel gives us to improvisationally make. That's always fun. But uh, on Fun University, then we try to take something from Craft Roulette and... Uh, dig into it just a little bit more tonight we have some i think so, a fun little project to show you there was one card that really stood out kind of as a different a different kind of card and i know you guys really like techniques and you really like project fun, fold type things folds <laughs> it's like a four letter f word but i've i'm okay so is fun fun is a four letter f word so um reclaiming the language um but we're going to make an inside bridge card using a book binding base. Inside inside bridge card using a book binding base. Good thing I got my dentures in straight. But first, first, I have such great mail. Do I have it all? No, I don't. Just a second. I went to <laughs> fun folds, lots of four letter words. And it's sunny here. Nice 99 degree day here in Kansas City. Uh, I am so glad that I have air conditioning. I grew up without it and it's it's serious when that happens. We do have I got great mail and we're not so just for just a review, um, just a little bit. We used to, we were doing um, achievement board here, but now we're doing it over on Craft Roulette. Remember that Friday we start at six ten with a slideshow during the tailgating party, and then the show starts at six thirty. So that's I'm just trying to remember everything as we go along. If you are new to Fun University, this is pro. I hope this is not um, a normal introduction, but if it is, it is, and we're okay. You know, it's okay. Mr. Mike has some big eyes. He needs a big nose. I was thinking maybe a baby sock, but I don't I don't go shopping, so like a red muppet. No. Maybe just a big red pom pom. Orange. Orange pom pom. Anyways, good to see you guys. Thanks for being here today. Patty Back, I saw your question. Do mosquitoes die in the heat? I that's a good question. My only thing my the only th Thing that I thought of was um, with all this heat, the moisture dries out, and so they don't have a place to spawn and have babies, lay eggs. So that's the only thing. Maybe there aren't quite as many. Purple pom pom, orange pom pom, purple pom pom, orange pom pom, orange. Maybe an or orangey purple pom 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 pom. That sounds like a sick pom pom. A Rudolph nose. Something that blinks. <laughs> but anyway, so we did that. Last week we had a great show. It was episode 121, and we had Lydia Fiedler. You guys loved her, but who wouldn't? Was she fun or what? She talked all about Texas, You, our, our good friends in Texas, and uh, talked a lot about critters. Maybe she knows about mosquitoes. And then um, we had some good, some good parameters, so we're going to talk about those. But um, the parameters, what were they? They were... Book binding, we had three, any three colors plus our craft roulette neutrals, house or houses, and a small scene. Turned out pretty good. Pretty good. And we have a hundred, hello Becky Biddle, and we have over 118 submissions right now. You can see them over at craftroulette.live. You can also find out all the information down below. Um, 118, and there are some great ones. You guys... You guys are good. <laughs> you guys are good. You're just, you're always good. But what we're going to talk about is um, how a unique way to improve your card making. So before we do that, let's look at our mail. Look at this, would you? Let's go down to paper. All right. So, woohoo. Um, 
this is from look at how pretty it is and it, this is no ordinary card i'll say not it was not i was um digging around trying to figure out she put this really pretty thing piece of paper which of course i'm going to have to take out and use because it's really pretty and i don't have anything like that <laughs> so you know i'm gonna have to make a card out of it <laughs> and so i get this nice little card from um card monkey look she's got a little mouth a monkey there he's got a card He's got scissors. <laughs> I know the penmanship is really good. And she just talks about how she loves our Friday, fun Fridays, as do I. Um, then she, so this says it's no ordinary card on the front. This is no ordinary card. That's no lie. So I was trying to figure this out. I was going, okay, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Pull here. So I could see the panels. And I, it just, and that you pull there, and she swims the other way. <laughs> She's swimming to my right. You pull the panels, and she swims to my left. Isn't that fancy? You want to see it from the side? I I just got this today. I don't think I'm smart enough to remake this, but uh, I sure enjoyed it. It's got these little U-shaped things, Christina. I know you're going to be wanting to take this apart. <laughs> but uh, it has a little U-shape connection somehow. And then, I don't know. It's it's mysterious. It's a magical mystery tour right here. But I thought it was just really so cool. And then on back, she's got another little place where you can write a little note. With a lovely sunbather. So you just pull. First I thought something pulled out. But no, it just pulls up. Thank you, card monkey. That's so cool. <laughs> I know. <laughs> just want to play with it, don't we? Yeah. There she goes to the right. No, go. Flip around. Flip around. Okay. And she does. Aren't those pretty colors, too? I liked the colors a lot. I know. Card Monkey's ma Mystical Mystery Card. Magical Mystery Tour. Um, she's she's full of tricks and surprises. She's kind of like Lydia Fiedler. Trixie like a hobbit. She's got all sorts of things up her sleeve. Then, then I got a really nice surprise. Look at here. Look at here. I'll just show you. I'll save the... Hide the address. But it's from Sweden. So can you guess who it's from? Mm-hmm. I think there's some good Swedish things right there. You know, I only took Swedish from the Swedish chef, so my, my Swedish is really bad. But I got all sorts of super duper fun things. Christina, you spoil me. I'm honestly, I don't want to miss a thing. Okay, so she has all these fun things in here. And starting with her dad was supposed to mail this for me, but we ain't cleaned his car. He found it between the seats. <laughs> yep, Christina. So we'll start with that. There's so many goodies in here. It's just, uh, just sit back. Are you guys ready? This is such cool stuff. Let me get a little closer. This is just such cool stuff. So envelope number one. Shall we see this first? Let's start with the, the card. Looky there. Who is that? Who is that? It is one of our friends, El Roboto. And it looks real um, multimedia with all the textures and things going on back there. With some, This is embossed and she really did it up nice. This is floating up and there's some jewels right there. By the way, before I forget, it seems like the trend right now is... Um, to use lots of gems. Have you noticed that? It's, it's been on my mind to tell you that. But he is gorgeous with his gold. And then, yep. So you can see it's kind of thick. And you pull this out. It says, happy birthday! <laughs> with all sorts of little robots in it. Oh my gosh! I hadn't even, I hadn't pulled them out because I was afraid that I'd ruin it. So I didn't know there were all these little robots in here. <sighs> Unbelievable. You know, it's just, 
It's just, and then she's got all these little robots here, too. And we did do a class on this. I took this apart when I watched one of her boxes. You do a very nice job, Christine. Much nicer than mine. And you do, you do use a kind of a thick paper. That's nice. Um, we did do a class on Fun University on how to make these. So if you do want to see how to make those, they're, they're not hard. They're remarkable. And they're tons of fun. So she um, just packed all these little robotios. I don't know how you say it in Swedish, but all I know how to say it in Swedish is Nura and Bork, Bork, Bork. And then you just put these guys in there and close them up. Oh, they came out the other side. Okay. Okay, guys. Places. Places. We're on, we're on the air. Uh-oh, he got a little bent up. And then you just fold it up in this little... But you can't glue this down or it won't open up. But you glue that down. Or I mean, hold that down. Don't you like the colors? Purplish, reddish violet, and orange. She's so clever. Did you know you did that, Christina? Did you know you kind of did a purple and orange? Sometimes we make... I love it, though. I totally love it. <laughs> I just love it. Escape ro artist robots. Aren't those, isn't that just fantastic? So I was just thrilled <laughs> with that. And then inside here, besides this poor little guy, I'm going to have to do a little chiropractic on him. There, he's better. He's like a foil, but he's thicker than foil. You know what he could do? He could sit right here and watch the show. There. Oh, you can't see him. He's right here. There he is. He's watching the show. So she sent, she now is on a design team for a um, Swedish stamp company. <laughs> there it is. Hmm, Gummiapon. 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 I don't know. And um, so she sent some little things for me to share with you guys. So um, we got a hello die and I have a nice day isn't that a pretty that was the one she used on here that's really a pretty font so graceful a beautiful little flower I thought that that flower was super pretty the way it was so it's very graceful too and nobody's getting this one a little robot <laughs> that's where these guys all were born isn't that fabulous? So, so amazing. Thank you, Christina. But there's more. I know. I know. Just, shoo. I don't know what to th think of this girl. So then she sent me one of her um, craft roulette. <laughs> one of her craft roulette cards. Which, um, which one? Oh, this was the insect one, wasn't it, Christina? Because you had an insect bug, gnome bug. Let's see, it says bug hug. That's cute. And then it has this, I want you to be able to see the clouds in there. And he's on, does he move? He does. He's on a little piece of, he's on a little piece of acetate and there's a brad in there. And it's, it's not going to work if I... Hold it this way because you won't be able to see it. Well, no, you can't see it. But he does hang loose and he does, he can wiggle. And he does, they both have on, they both have wings. <laughs> yeah, I'm not giving red this away. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, um, and then on the back, she's got beautiful flowers. It's like a total event, isn't it? It means rubber monkey. Oh my gosh. Card monkey, are you here? You are here. You are here. Yes, I received the mail. Did you see that? That this is Swedish for whatever it, where, where it went. This is Swedish for rubber monkey. I, you are destined to go to Sweden and hang out with, with our Swedish friends. I thought this was just delightful. Unbelievably fun. I liked it a lot when we saw it in the... Um, gallery but this is just i know <laughs> really team monkey you guys are are kin kindred spirits and then she sent a few more stamps 
for me to share with y'all. So these will become itty bitty gifts in a small card, in a handmade card. Um, this one's hilarious. This one is hilarious. Are you ready for this funny one? I love you with all my butt <laughs> because it's bigger than my heart. <laughs> I never thought of that, but you know, it's dad gum true. I love you with all my butt because it's bigger than my heart. <laughs> I'm not sure what the card would look like with that one. It's almost more than I can I can handle right this second. And then here's one that says Hoppy. I would give up chocolate, but I'm no quitter. <laughs> I'm so hoppy for you. With a bear. That's a good idea, deputy. Yeah, with a bear. That would be a really good idea. I know I'm dying too, Grandma Gay. And I'm sorry I for forgot your birthday. The backside of a critter would work. And a bear in particular, I think, would be great. I eat cake because it's somebody's birthday somewhere. <laughs> so fantastic. I love you with all my butt because it's bigger than my heart. And then if not only that, here we have some more. Hippo would be good too. Elephant. Elephant, elephant, elephant. That saying is what my daughter is putting on in her thank yous to everyone helping her. <laughs> That's really good. A bunny butt would be cute too. Happy Christmas, P-E-A. There's a little gingerbread man. This one is there's some there's some there's snowbody like you. I kept trying to read that wrong. Little red stamps. I think they're clean. Believe in the magic of Christmas. That sounds like something Christina would have. Dear Santa. That's cute. Just simple Dear Santa. Oh, look. There's a little... That's... You know, that's the kind of stamp that just drives me nuts. I love things like that. And Dear Santa would fit on there. And it would have a little place for a Brad. There's a teeny tiny strawberry. <laughs> and here's a bigger... Is that a mama and a... Yeah. A mama and a baby or a daddy and a baby or a big brother and a little sister or a little brother? Isn't that... Those are, aren't, aren't those just the best? So absolutely fun. This was just... This was a, a, so much fun to open up. I have one more card to show you from her. As hard as that is to believe, that wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, I think there may be a bunch of people that need the butt stamp. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at this. Holy moly mo smoke gurus. Camper. And this exquisite letter. Look at her writing. With Santa Claus, of course. Look at her writing. When she got the camper die, I knew I had to make a Christmas in July card for you. <laughs> I have included an itty bitty gift. Well, that was no itty bitty gift. That was a ton hand. I suppose that means handmade. <laughs> yeah. And look at the detail on this. It just doesn't quit. It's like um, I spy with my little eye kind of cards. And her choices, I know I brag on Christina a lot, but I just, she's, her cards are just like museum pieces to me. And um, and I wasn't the one that thought of that first. I showed it to my daughter when she first started showing cards. She and Buell, and my daughter went, "Well, these should these are like from gift stores or something in museums, <laughs> and they're so fun." But I the time that this kind of thing takes is just uh, a remarkable gift to give somebody. But uh, I, Rudolph's hiding. There's a little gnomey boat. I didn't know Santa had a camper. And then he went he went maybe out on the road in the summer. Well, I guess he does get a little vacation. There's a little pool and there's some water in it. There's a little bit of shine on it. The details, the details, the details. Maybe some ice cream over here. Whipped cream with some strawberries. 
and a little shiny pitcher. The silver has some reflective qualities. The windows have acetate in them. And the tiny little Swedish flag. Yep. These are little um, bells with the pennants. Little teeny tiny bows. And seagulls. Fun in the sun. Just, just a remarkable little piece. Yeah, the details are just amazing. So you know what I'll do? I'll take a picture of this and, and let everybody enjoy it on the Facebook group. But this is what, uh, I, oh, I got something else before I, because I went shopping. I liked the things I got from Trinity so much. Thank you, Christina. That was a super, super gift. You, Ellen and you are just something else. So I went, I went shopping at Trinity Stamps because I liked some of the things I got so much. And they had a fantastic sale. And so, I, you know, I just couldn't resist. And so this was one of the little stamps I got. I, these were like for a steal. I can't even remember how much they were. But these are little bird, a little bird stamp. Seasons tweetings from our nest to yours. Sending warm winter wishes. This cold weather is for the birds with B-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-D-S. <laughs> Hi, Tweetheart. Isn't that just, I thought those were just adorable. I couldn't resist them because we often have birds right in the we also often have birds on the wheel at least in the spring so I thought oh that's something I can get ahead then this one was I've never seen anything quite like it that was part of my reasoning to get it plus it had a kitty but um, just dropping in to say hi sounded like a great friendly stamp um, to say just to have something nice and a nice kitty to draw or color so I thought that would be fun. And oh, shoot. That is how you spell that kind of shoot. Parachute or a shoot that you send a horse through or a cow through. And then um, a kitty. And I just thought that was adorable too. And I thought that would be very uh, versatile. If you turn it upside down, you can have a little bowl. You could make it kind of an Arizona Indian bowl kind of thing. And not have anything else. Have some things, cactus coming out of it. Wouldn't that be pretty? Oh, and it almost looks like little mountains, doesn't it? With some clouds. You could do blues and greens. Oh, that'd be pretty. Okay, this one is a, this one's one of my favorites. One of my favorites. This is not a card. It's a hug with a fold in the middle. Oh, lady, my old tough heart just kind of melted when I saw that. I thought it was so cute. This would be a great little um, inside the um, card message, wouldn't it? Yes. I think Trinity Stamps has some really good stuff. And I liked that one very much. And I liked this one very much. Thank you. I know I have a lot of thank yous. But I didn't have any thank you this size. <laughs> or this size. But I thought, um, surely I could use some of these. So, um, for your kindness, I you know. I can't thank you enough. I, those were all kind of different ways to say that, so I thought that was kind of fun. And it was not very expensive. This one, I thought also, ooh, sometimes in the spring we have rain or on the wheel. And I think I've kind of spent all my rain on the wheel kind of ideas. So, uh, so I thought, well, there's a cute little girl, and I bet you I could do something with her. I'm not sure what, but she also has cute little ducks, and there's a cute little umbrella. I'm here for you, rain or shine? I thought that was really a good one. Um, is the best place to be. No matter the weather, we're in this together. Rainy days are, bent spe are best spent together. So, yep, little duckies. I can do something with that. There's even raindrops. Drippy, drippy. Mm -hmm. So if I ever put drip... If I ever put drip on the wheel, I've got one. <laughs> and this little guy I thought was just a pretty little flower. And honestly, I thought this would be really fun to color. So I, I got this one and I loved the leaves. And oh, I just noticed there's a butterfly. I didn't even notice that. But here's some you can do. Um, you could stamp this and put it under some of those others to make it a little bigger. Or you can stamp this add some sprays of leaves and flower 
and then put some of these on top to make it a little bit bigger. And pretty soon you're going to have a whole a whole card. Aren't they the cutest? I think they're just really cute too. Yeah, I'm I'm a good shopper sometimes. And then here we go. One more. Oh, nope. I got this Love XOXO cuz I I I don't have that and I thought that would be fun to use. So I got that. It was a great sale. And I know they were digging out from quite a while. And then we got the dust bunnies. <laughs> the dust bunnies. And I am going to make a card with them tonight. So they're cute. <laughs> I think they're just so cute. The style is kind of, uh, a little bit different. It And I did watercoloring on it because they're so kind of wiggly. They're not straight lines at all. And straight lines for me are great for coloring with other kinds of things but for something that has see all the wiggles on them I thought that would because they're dust <laughs> they're dust dust to dust um so I thought with all those little squiggles it'd be really cute with some watercolors and I had some left over so I'll show you a couple and then, but I am going to make a card tonight with them so hang hang with us see how cute that's really pale Oh, he his ears got bent, just like the robot. Yep, they're very washed out right now, but hopefully they will be better. And, I keep saying and. It's almost more than I can take. Let's put these guys away. And, because Trinity is such a fun group, and they are our, one of our spin sponsors this month, we do have a Just For Fun 10, F-U-N-N, the number 10, for a 10% discount this month for Craft Roulette viewers. She also includes a little die. I, maybe there's a minimum you have to have. Um, I'm pretty sure there probably is. There's a little die, which I will be able to use for a small, an itty-bitty gift, which is actually a nice gift. Um, a little candy. Always... Right, right right on the to my heart and hips and a little fruit flavored infusion so I can enjoy my little taste buds can enjoy my stamping time so it's super fun place to uh, to shop so this was a card I made with those last week that I made with those that little die set that was a gift and I just did white did you notice this I'm wondering I'm wondering um, if, they're kind of crooked, but I'm wondering if it's like in August they're going to do no color August because it's the thing right now is to have color backgrounds and scenes and whatnot with white focal points. I'm thinking there must be a no color, no color August. But I thought this one turned out kind of cute too. Kind of like my card from this month, the, last week. I see a pattern. I see the same paper. I see. I go on vendors. That's the one. So anyway, just consider using them if you do have a little spare change for your craft budget. Because um, it was fun. It was really fun. Let me grab a couple cards because um, my lesson tonight, and I got, I was drawing. I got sidetracked. I was. I was drawing. I am. Um, I have been working so hard. I not hard. Not working hard. Having fun. Hard. Hard at having fun. D filling my sketch pad. And um, then I got this iPad, which, because I want to do things for our patrons with my iPad. So I got this iPad, and I can take a picture of the things I draw with my sketch pad. <laughs> And then make it into things. So it's very exciting. And that's what I was doing bef while I was sitting there engrossed in my thoughts. But that's why I kind of forgot what I was doing. Um, book binding. There is a video on craft. No, 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 no. There is a video on Fun University about book binding. Um, there's a whole, a whole class on it. 
There is also one on bridge, bridge cards. So we're going to combine the two tonight. But if you want to go deeper, they're already there for you. Um, you guys, I think you did a neat job, though, with the book binding. I got, I think everybody likes it. Um, it's just a, it's just a good little thing. You can, it makes your card have a little bit different, um, approach because you end up with the square area, which is a whole different little canvas size for most of us. And then it has that little second panel. So you get to choose and just after this lesson tonight, go back to the craftroulette.live gallery and start looking at them and see how people use those two panels. Some of them, they um, extended the whole picture across the whole thing with a split. There's a faux, I did a faux book binding card, a couple of them actually. And um, some of them have a whole element over on the little panel all by itself that associates with the little square part and everything. There's a lot of good things you can learn from it. Um, but kiss your brains. Uh, the varieties of the sizes were great. Book binding is kind of limiting in its sizes. I know there was one at least that was a longer one, and it had a s very small book binding, like a half. And so you can decide on your book binding panel how big you want to make it. It can be a half an inch. It can be two inches, you know. You can do all sorts of things with it. We just are scratching the surface. But um, you do get to play with that relationship between the focal larger focal area and that little panel, which is different. That's a whole different thing that you usually don't really see with just straight up A2 cards. Whether you want the relationship to be joint or separate, um, deep or narrow, shallow, all sorts of things you, ha you get to decide. Most of the times they're not all that at least <laughs> I don't. Most of the time, I don't have that cognizant of decision making, but because uh, I just get into my rut and just do the whole thing. But um, y yeah, you could do a horizontal slimline book buying card. You'd have to um, you'd have to have two pieces of paper and then just put a a wrap around the bottom or top. Yeah. Yeah, there's just so much. I think you'll enjoy it. If you didn't see that lesson, I think you might enjoy it. Um, any three colors were our color options. Again, if you do have trouble with color, it's a great place to go um, to just look through and see which colors you like together. And then once you find out what they are, then get your color wheel out and, and figure it out where they are on the color wheel chart. And start learning how they all work together. And then you can start going, oh, well, that was a split complementary. Oh, I'll be darned. And I used a tint. And I used a full pure color. So you get to um, do all sorts of stuff. There's a great thing on Ardeth. Did a great thing on color blending and color combinations. I think it's, um, it's coming out of the closet. Color combinations. Figuring them out on your own. But it's a great, great tool um, to be able to have. And the gallery can be a, a helpful thing for that. Uh, some of, What did I use? I used orange, red, and green. Three colors plus neutrals is a lot. It doesn't seem like it. You think, I think color, sometimes you go, oh, I want so many colors. But honestly, when you're working on a small canvas like that, three colors is a lot to uh, bring in. And four is... Four is like, oh, easy to forget the fourth one, except maybe a little pink on a cheek or something like that. But generally, three three will do you. Plus, you can always mix, and you have the whole column to work with. So uh, I think it, if you're stuck on a color and you don't know what to do with a color situation, you can think, limit your options and so that you can bring it down and just go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself three. And I'm going to do it because I did it on Craft Roulette and I'm fine. I lived. It's fine. Every, everybody's good. Crafting went on. The YouTube didn't shut down. I didn't get lose my card-carrying privileges, card-making privileges. So anyway, that's, uh, that's just something you can do when you're stuck. Um, house. Houses and small scenes. How fun was that together? I thought that was super great. I think small scene was a Melissa Miller 
suggestion, which or miniature, but I changed it to small because miniature is too hard to spell. And um, so, no, I probably could miniature. Um, so anyway, but houses in a small scene turned out super fun. You guys, of course, brought the critters. Everybody's got to bring in the critters. We had a whole bunch of them. We had chickens, beavers, um, snails. Didn't see that one. Birds, uh, dogs, um, mice. Um, some houses were being seen from the inside. Some were being seen from the outside. Some of them were just something you'd find in a house. Uh, we had a camper. Um Jen Zad did a porch swing, so she would did something from the outside. And Makira did something on the inside. She did a chair. But it worked because it was houses, and so that was all part of the houses thing. And so I think you guys are really, really uh, understanding how to do the element parameters so much. I really like it. Um, it's very fun. Beaver? That's right. We had beaver too, Heidi Ryan. Was that yours? Was that yours? I don't remember whose that was. We had a turtle, too. Anne Rebidoux did a turtle on his back. I wanted to put the card right on the right side the wrong way so I could do it. Have him have him flipped around. Um, we had lots of beach cabanas. Cat in the window. Yep. Beach cabanas were really fun, and we're all wanting a beach vacation, I think, right now. Just, um... Uh, Toes in the sand would be a good thing. We had summertime. We had Christmas time. We had winter time. We had country houses. We had city houses. Um, houses on the horizon. Just a huge assortment of houses. And like Lydia said, you would not necessarily be able to figure out what the parameters were if you didn't know. And I think that's so absolutely true. And I think that speaks a lot to your ability to understand parameters. So I think that's super great. Um, small scene, again, it was one of those, let's bring in a small area of a house or a big area of the house on the, in the background. Lots of lots of different varieties on that with some white space, no white space. You just, you really, you really did a good job. So let's get to a... Let's get to a quick lesson so we can get to the project. So my my lesson tonight is kind of kind of heady. A unique way to um, improve your card making is to comment about a card. Now this was inspired by our friend Jackie Jackie Rip. Because she would look at a card and she would see the first thing that she saw on it would be what she would comment about it. And I was, I was just thinking about it. And um, it, it's, it, slows, it slows us down. New York apartment buildings. Oh, yes. And the House of Parliament. Don't forget the House of Parliament. Oh, my gosh. Or the House of Commons by Sue Harris. Which ended up being having an interesting story about what she did in her life as a job. So when you look at a card, when you go to, and this is a Facebook kind of exercise, it seems kind of odd, but when you look at a card, we go so fast, right? When, like on the slide show and everything, you go so fast. And when you look in the gallery, it's hard not to get too go fast because there's so much. But at the same time, if you slow down and just look at a couple cards at a time and just look at what stands out, why does it why does it make you feel the way you feel? Why do you like it? Does it is it look like a good picture altogether? Do you like the way it um, has weight, top or bottom? Do you like the lines? Um, do you like the colors together? Think in parameters. And go, okay, so what kind of card is this? This is an A2 card. What could it be? This could be an A2 card with a belly band. So you start to think, oh, yeah, I haven't done a belly band in a while. Maybe I should do a belly band on my next A2 card. Or I could make it a gatefold card and make it a get belly band. I think I could even leave a... I could even leave... Or let's keep going... 
colors. What colors, what do you like best about these colors? If you don't like something, don't worry about it. Let that, let that go. <laughs> we don't bring that one to Facebook. But if you like something about it, look for the things you like and, and go ahead and leave a comment about those things that you like because that's going to start building in your mind what makes a good card. And it's going to be real fancy that way. It's a brain thing, I think. I'm totally making this up as a theory, but I think it's right. <laughs> it's another theory. Okay, so if you look at the colors, just look down the parameter list. Okay, we had the project. All righty, we examined it that way. We looked at the colors. We've got yellow, orange, yellow, green, and orange. What kind of color combination is that? It's an it's is it analogous? Almost. We have yellow green, yellow orange, and orange. But they all have what do they have in common? They have a yellow hue or a yellow base. So if you slow that down just a little bit and you start going, okay, do I like cards with yellow bases? Do I do. <laughs> of course I do. But um, if you like cards, maybe you'll find out that you like cards with a blue base or a red, more of a red base. But this one has a, everything involved with it. It has yellow. So when you think down the parameter list, and you can learn to do this. It's really fine. Project A2, what can I do with it? Belly band. Um, colors. We have almost an analogous color scheme, but they all have yellow in them. Project, or uh, element. Well, I would say pretty much you'd say something about a tree, wouldn't you? So maybe think in terms of nature. What could you add to that? What makes this tree look special? Do you like the white ink on the flowers in the tree? Do you like the, sil the liquid glass or the glossy accents on the leaves? What do you like about it? Do you like that the leaves are kind of smeared because they I used the wrong ink? <laughs> so do you like the white outline? Do you like the little tiny bow? Would this bow be better if it were green? Would this bow, is this bow okay because it's yellow and there's enough contrast? What about the sentiment? Hello. Do you like it in white? Do you like that it stands out? Do you like that there's a lot of contrast? Why do you think the author of this card, moi, put this white edge on the orange strip? It was contrast, I'll tell you the answer. It was contrast. Because if this was just on this back piece, it would just blend into, um, melt into its own color, and you wouldn't see it as well. This is, actually was a piece of trash. I laugh about my trash cards. It was a piece of trash from this card. Would hello work on this card as well, that size hello? You might think it, you might think it does, and it might. I like the size, uh, the proportion of that thanks with this card. I think thanks would be a little big for this one. So if you slow down and you start going, okay, what are the design things that are going on here? What did she do? I like the, do I like the ombre on this? How did she do the ombre on this? I think I have a class on this too, by the way. <laughs> I don't remember what, is this from, okay, it's from follow, uh, Fun University 117 if you want to see how that was made. Um, tone on tone. That could have been a random. Couldn't, couldn't it? Tone on tone. Do you like tone on tone? Do you think that adds to it? Would it be better if it were some black? Would it add to it if it were blue? You have lots of options in color. But if you slow down, look at the card, and start asking yourself, what do I like about it? Those are things that you can build. You don't have to have a notebook. You don't have to have anything. You don't have to keep notes on it. But you need, when you leave a comment, you're also talking to yourself and saying, I like this aspect of this card. This will help me make better cards.
because I've slowed down, I've seen what I like, and I can use that. I have it now in my brain. Let's look, look at another one. I won't just do orange tonight. Let's do purple. Was this a card? This was 117 too. Okay, this one is 117. It was purple. What do we have? When we first look at it, what, what's the first things we glom onto? What do we notice? You notice the purple flowers, the splatters, the pay, the ink, the special ink present or technique on the water. Er, water. Er, er. Do you notice that it's a tag? Do you notice that there's the color scheme? The water can is the first thing you notice. The purple tag. Ellen notices that it's a purple tag first. <laughs> He would go camping if it involved air-conditioned cabin, right? Me too. Running water, electricity, and all that. That's I think it's called a hotel on the beach <laughs> with, the, with the forest. Okay, you're noticing the tag first, Linda. The shiny metallic on the water can, so you go, you're going for details first. Do you like those things? You may not. It's fine. You're not going to hurt my feelings. But do you like those things? Do you like the way the can is colored <laughs> do you like the purple flowers do you like that they're variegated do you like all the different textures and patterns did you even notice that this little thing is hanging there <laughs> it's so it's kind of a small detail and it's got silver dots on it this has some um, this has some um, dots just for a little bit of text or pattern, and it also reflects it down here. So if you look at it, you go, okay, it's an A2 size card, tag card. Is there anything special about this tag? It's, there's not. It doesn't move. It's not interactive. It's just plain, spaghetti. It's plain vanilla, not plain spaghetti, but that's, that can be very plain too pasta you and pasta so then you notice there's not a lot of color there's purple green and gray I guess we just had two colors I, I guess and you can start going okay purple green and gray well that makes a pretty solid card you like the dots and splatters <laughs> that's me too Ellen Holiday Inn versus the Ritz <laughs> <laughs> I would even go to the holiday and that's right it would all be fine um, for colors so you think okay so we've got a bluish green and a bluish purple that's okay do you um, because a red purple is going to be a lot different than a blue purple a red violet and a blue violet it has a little red violet in it actually and the blue green color for the leaves okay so color you can do it with two can't you because you have all those neutrals and then I did a bunch of vari variegation in there with the different colors and I added little bits of white to make it stand out a little bit do you feel like those flowers are kind of standing out a little bit <laughs> my mouth gets ahead of my brain Becky yeah, do you feel I feel like they're they feel like they're standing out just a little bit because they have some white in addition to this white background there. It's whiter. You love it because it's team purple. <laughs> then we get to the element. What would you guess it was? It was water. I think that's this was, but I was there. I it was uh, water, so I used a watering can. Do you like that it's pretty centered? Do you like the string here and the string here? I'm a little lukewarm on it, but it's okay. This is a page reinforcer. Kind of a fun thing. Got a little bit of, look at, now look for the details. Because there's quite a few details. We talked about the splatters, which probably could have been done better because they're clear over here. Kind of a hot mess, but that's okay. The Does the metal look at it, looking at the metal, does that make you go, oh, man, I think I would want to comment on that. I think I want to try using some metal. 
Oh, I like the page protector or the reinforcer. I, I think I would like to leave a comment about that because I want to have that in my brain as something that I want to try. I like the little jewelry tag. I do like those little jewelry tags. <laughs> you love that meta? <laughs> That's me. I've been hanging around with Mr. Producer too long. He's meta-brained me. Um, do you like that the... The edges are softly inked for a little bit of a framing. What would you leave a comment? What is the first thing that you see that you go, oh, I want to remember that. Because oftentimes when we look at cards, we look at cards and go, ah, I hope I remember that. I want to try that. <laughs> night, night, deputy, you be careful. So that's my lesson is slow down. Think of each card as a way to examine them with parameters and start to get the and making comments because that way you are giving you're giving your brain a, a signal to say, hey, I said I like that once. I'm gonna try that. Brain stuff. Brain stuff. But I think it would I think it works because I know um well, you don't have to overthink, Grandma Gate. You just have to think about what you like. Just the things that you like and then apply them. <laughs> um, so you can just kind of uh, feel that and just, which, what do you like best? Which colors do you like best? What do you like about it? Tell your brain that you like it by telling somebody else that you like it. It's very selfish to do. And so when I'm thinking of a card, I'm going, what did I tell him I liked about it? Oh, yeah. I remember now. I did like that. All right. So the cool thing that we, we've we discovered was Pam, and I don't know how to say her last name, V-E-A-L-E. -E. I asked, I sent her a, an email to see if she could tell me <laughs> because I don't want to say it wrong. She hasn't written back. Okay. Um, v e. A L E, and she did this cool. Uh, it was like a faux bookbinding card, so she had this panel right over here, and then she had a bridge card inside, which I thought was just unique, and I liked it very much. So using an A2 size card, cutting the paper down the middle so it's at four and a fourth, and it's a top fold. Then you need um, another piece of cardstock that's four and a fourth or slightly smaller. By six and a half. <laughs> when you're having fun making a card, you can't stop. I understand. And then you score it for a half an inch. So it sticks up a half an inch. You score it at one, one and a half, five, and five and a half. And then this is the bridge, and it's five and a half inches. Alrighty. So that's the prototype. There is also an introduction to fancy folds or fun folds on Fun University. And I talk about how I organize my fun fold templates. Um, and here, I didn't do the front yet, but this is, and then I spill, I dropped an ink pad. So I got less than interested in finishing this. But this is what it would look like if you had one white bait, a white inside pattern paper, which is pretty, very summery feeling, right? And this was something else. I think um, Cordelia Alderman had done this with a little, those details that just make you go crazy, um, with a little hole punch so that you have something to tie, tie your little string on the panel. Oh, I loved it. So this would be pretty. I wanted to say you, like Y-O-U, but I don't have a good one cute tomato but I haven't done it so and then I got discouraged so um, so that's what it looks like when you have a bridge card inside looks really cool you can write stuff over here these are I gotta let my dog out just a sec boomer was in here with me and I he was he doesn't like doors <laughs> so um, let's put one of these together Here's a color tip um, trick. This was done with watercolor, and then it didn't look right. It was too red because I'm using all this orange, this yellow base paper. 
So all I, all I did to fix it was take some yellow ink and pounced it. And I think I showed that. No, it was on, on the Patreon. Um, and so that now you have this yellowy tomato. And it's really an easy way to color. All right. So this is one of my faux papers, my faux binding, book binding papers, because it does have a fold there, but it's just, this was the edge of the paper, like the branding strip, and I just used that as the edge. This is the piece that is four and a quarter, but I made it just four because I didn't want it to go clear to the edge, by six and a half. This is folded at, or scored at one, one and a half, five, and five and a half. This is some paper I got at my paper boyfriend's. And there are bridge cards classes, like I said, on Fun University. So I'm not going to do a whole lot on how to make them. But that's all. That's all it takes to make it. And then it goes in here. The thing about bridge cards, when you are adhering them, that's tricky. This side can, the one side um, that's going to be next to the fold, you go ahead and fold it in while you fold this out. Is that right? Am I going? Yes. And the only part that you'd add adhesive on is this middle part in back. Oh, gosh, I forgot. I ran out of paper or uh, glue. No, tape. One of those words. Yes, I did used to call all four kids' names before I got the right one. And you don't want to go on top of that fold. You can go a little inside. Because it's going to be closed like that right no it's going to be nope nope I got that wrong take it up I knew there was something goofy so you're gonna want to have that like that that's why it goes over there okay so you fold that down because it's gonna you want to be able to fold it and close it I really was not fun folds are not my thing and so then when you do the bridge which is five and a half inches you just glue it onto these two outside panels. So you know it's going to be an inch. I can't see if it's straight. But it's going to be an inch. Those are so pretty colors, aren't they? Because I didn't like this paper at all when I looked at it at 12 inches, but it's really pretty is one of these. And there it is. It's popped up to be a little bridge card inside. And then you can put a little note, a little scene or something. But when you do put them together, you just put the glue on this big panel in the back. And then um, just on here and here to do the glue. And then that's how it folds flat. And then these guys can be cut up and added on and it'll be fine. Let me show you another one. Oh, I was going to show you this. Let's figure th let's finish this one. My little dust bunnies. I, I didn't realize it was going to get so late. This is an A2 size card. There's the front already done. Dust for you. <laughs> and then I think I'd put another panel on here. And let's see if I can do this one. No, this one is... He's a little big, isn't he? A little big. We might have to pull him in just a little bit. He is. I didn't do a very good job of measuring. Probably because I was not doing a very good job of... I was so excited about the dust bunnies. Okay, we'll just go with that. And then this is going to go this way when it's out. No, this is all screwy. This is all screwy in the Louie. We'll fix it. Oh, why do I do these things to myself? I know, because I was thinking this was... No, I don't know. <laughs> Look at her struggle. Isn't it just so interesting, Madge? Um, so that would go out like this. That would stick out, though, you see. 
That's kind of fun though, but that doesn't work. And if it's like this, then it doesn't fold without a fold. Well, aren't you just so special, Mary? I did this with an inch. You know what? I love these dust bunnies. I'm going to do a separate one on this tomorrow with it right. And it's going to be right. So I don't want to even mess with it. Because I do have another thing to show. Look how cute they are. I can't stand them. They're so cute. And look at that. It says a chew. And this guy is going to be standing right here. And he's going to be saying a chew. And then these guys, these they're on the bed. See, that was another reason I got this. Because of this bed. It's all going to be on some clear stuff. And it's going to poke up like that. But i got to get it right. And I did paint the background. I think I was too too many things going on in this little brain. But let's look at this one. This one did turn out. How beautiful it is to do nothing and then rest afterwards. This is a 6x6, six six, Christina's favorite. And it has a little piece cut off of it. So that it has the background showing. And then it does pop up right does now that one worked <laughs> see i can't do it and that is with a book binding and there it has a little piece on the back to um, cover it up but i thought that was fun because it ha this has a inch this is an inch so you would make what's this part so this is four inches plus Four inches, so it's eight by six inches, right? Folded it one, two, uh, two plus four, six, seven. So that all pulls out just like that. And this was also watercolored. And then this was hiding. See, I had an okay card. I did. I had one. <laughs> and a warm hello, beach babes. Warm hello. What are your thoughts on this when you first look at it? If you were to leave a nice message, a nice comment, instead of the nice, the, hey, you crack our head. <laughs> hey, spaghetti brains. Um, don't do that card. What do you think? <coughs> if you were, if you wanted to learn something from this card, what would it be? What would you want to tell your brain to remember? The colors? The size, I know uh, Lydia, I think it was Lydia, I was saying, gosh, I just like how you, no, it wasn't Lydia. I like how you did that, just cut this down on one side a little bit. My brain, my brain, my brain. I can see her face. Um, I like how you did that. So maybe that's all it is, something that simple to remember, oh, I liked that you cut an inch off the edge. Do you like this? Does that stand out? Would that be something you want to tell your brain by leaving a comment that you like it? Do you like how this hides the same image underneath? Do you like that there's a bridge card inside? Do you like that there's an extra little thing there? You could put a little, um, a mean, a little mini card there. That would be fun. Do you like the the random element of tone on tone stamping in the background do you like that it was watercolored what are the things that you would want to make your brain think oh you know i'd like to try that those are the comments that we leave and then you become this fabulous glitter fairy in the meantime <laughs> I coughed, so I put that down. Thank you. Yep, two multiple prints are great. That's a great one. Measurements are important. <coughs> uh, yep, Mary was on mute. 
no longer. Yeah, I like to put things and hide them too. All right, all right. Let's um, cut out for the night. We do want to thank our patrons. Where are they? There they are. <coughs> Pardon me. We are, only need five more to make it a hundred. If we get them, if we get, I'm. Am I still a mute? No, nope, I'm not on mute, I don't think. Um, <coughs> but I'm still on cough. If we get to 100 patrons. I'm waiting. I'm going to make sure you hear me because I I think I'm here. You can. Okay. Uh, thank you, Becky. If we get to 100 patrons by this week, Friday night, we'll have a party, an, a Zoom party on Saturday. Or maybe Sunday if we need to. It's five's not much, just for a five dollar donation for the rest of. And you don't have to sign up for life. It's like a month to month thing. And you you do a it does do a automatic thing, but you can always cut it off. Look at all you fine fine people. And we um we can do we all we need is five. We're gonna have a party, Zoom party. I'm ready. I miss you guys. I love those Zoom calls. Um, we do have. So thank you guys so very much. Really, really appreciate you being a part of our world. Um, we have episode 122 this Friday. Yeah, Zoom party. 122 this Friday. Are you going to be ready? We're going to have Shana, Shanna, Shanna from, and she's a Trinity girl. So we're going to, I talked to her today. She was really sweet. She's been sick. She's had COVID. So we're going to have an opportunity to, be nice but she was fine she was fine she's feeling better but um she's a nurse and real interesting northern california real sweet woman so i'm looking forward to spending the evening with her um so join us friday remember the show starts the slideshow tailgating slide. you guys are coming at 10 till now five till it's wonderful we're just might as well just spend the entire friday together um <clears throat> but we do uh 610 Central Daylight Time is when the slideshow starts with the tailgate party. You're welcome to join us there. And um, the chatterbox is live at that point, so it's really fun. And then the show starts at 630, and we'll see how that goes. Remember, if you are a patron, you have till Thursday night to send in your card. If you aren't a patron and you want till Thursday night to send in your card, join us. And we'll get that closer to 100 and then you will be eligible for the drawings on from Trinity and a tr and a cherry on top. So that's that's all good, don't you think? I think that's good. And I will go ahead and just figure out my <laughs> my um my measurements and do just do the video tomorrow and put it on on something. Fun university probably. Yeah. All right. Kiss my brains even though I made a mistake whatever right right leave a comment to yourself dear self it's okay if you screw up on a live it's okay They're, they won't kick you out of the union the card making union because there isn't one I'm going to kiss mine again because I needed it one for you guys and we'll see you Friday on Craft Roulette episode 122 nighty night